The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, hear the prayers of this parish family of St. Monica's in Providencialis. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us, O Lord, all things necessary for our common life. Bless the incoming designated rector, Reverend Desiree Johnson. Bless us, O Lord, as we celebrate these activities during this Youth Sunday month. We ask, O Lord, that you continue to pour your blessings upon us, that we will give you the thanks and glory for what you've done. On this feast day of St. Michael and all angels, we ask his prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed Lord and Father, we have assembled in your name and in fellowship with one another. Enable us by your grace to offer sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to proclaim and respond to your holy word. Teach us to pray for your word and your church. Grant that we, confessing our sins, may word you of you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice and eat and drink of your spiritual food 
in this holy sacrament. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all eyes are known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthy magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. together the theme Almighty Father you have called your people to be in community with you and each other head of prayers to the parishes communities within this diocese that are faced with many challenges by the power of your spirit strengthen and inspire us to live lives pleasing to you help us to remain faithful as we use the gifts and talents you have given us in the building up of your church and the community it serves for the sake of him who came among us as one who serves your son our savior jesus christ amen genesis chapter 28 
verse 10 to 17. Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran. He came to a Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night, because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there, were, there was a ladder set up on earth, the top of it reaching heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside them and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke up from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I, didn't know, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is, the place, is this place. This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven, the word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today, Psalm 103, verses 19 to 22. The psalm may be found on page 3 of the bulletin. Psalm 103, 19 to 22. We will read the psalm alternately. The Lord has set his throne in heaven. and his kinship has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his face, you might be one who is so misfit in you. My heart is the voice of the Lord. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the second lesson. Twelve, verses seven to twelve. War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought back, but they were defeated, and there was no longer any space for them in heaven. The great dragon was thrown down. The Asian, the Asian serpent, who was called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world, he has thrown down to earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven proclaiming, Now have come the salvation and the power of the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of the comrades has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. But they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they did not cling to life, even, if, even in the face of death. Rejoice then heaven. Rejoice then, you heavens and those who dwell in them. <coughs> but woe to the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you with great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. The word of the Lord.
Gospel of John, chapter 1, beginning at the 49th verse. Glory to God, When Jesus saw Nathaniel coming toward him, he said to him, Here is truly in his light, in whom there is no deceit. Nathaniel asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathaniel replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and ascending upon the Son of Man. This is the gospel of Christ. I speak in his name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Today, my dear friends, to those who are visiting in our midst, who are not at the part of the Anglican and the Catholic faith, on the 29th of each year, we celebrate the feast day of St. Michael and all angels. The lessons for the day remind us that the angels are an important ingredient in our lives. You can't be a Turks Islander, my dear friends, if you don't have any Turks Island in you. You can't have peas and rice if you forget the peas. You can't have Big Mac if you don't have burgers. You can't have KFC if you don't have chicken. And so the lessons for the day remind us that angels are an important ingredient in our lives. The first lesson, my dear, takes us to the book of Job. Now remember that Job, oh, sorry, Genesis, I must be nervous. <laughs> Strike that camera. <laughs> the first lesson takes us to Genesis. And in Genesis, my dear friend, we hear about Jacob. Now, I don't know about you, but Jacob was a crook. Woo! Woo! All the police call a popo, as Medea says. Because Jacob was crooked. Who remembers the story about Jacob and Esau? It says that Jacob and Esau were brothers, they were twins. 
They fought against each other in the womb. And it says that Jacob came out saw. He had nice skin. But he saw came out like a warrior. Like Mr. Rock, they say the rock. The rock, one of those big wrestler fella type, type, type fellas. And let's call, um, you know, that Miami Dolphins. Everybody should know Miami Dolphins. Let's call Jacob Toa Hagamalua. This soft little pretty boy. And it says that when Jacob and he saw father was ready to die, said, the wife overheard it. Rachel heard it and said, Man, come here, Jacob. Your daddy is going to die. And he let it go. He says he wants some soup. And it says that Jacob, mummy, and him concocted in themselves to make this delicious soup. Oh, hallelujah. It was a cuckoo soup. And it says that this soup was so good. Mm, say finger licking good. But said, Jacob says, hold on, hold on. My father is going to know the difference because I have no hair on my body like he saw. But he saw hairy and manly. And so Rachel decided that she's going to kill a lamb and she's going to cover Jacob's soft, non hairy body with the fur from the lamb. When Jacob went into his father, he had the soup. And his father was so surprised. He said, man, where you going to, to get the soup so good? You're going with GK or put all the little food sauce on in him. You want a psalm to one of place to get it so quickly. But it says that he found it. And so he prepared the soup and bought his father. And his father gave him the blessing. When Esau came, he worked hard. He worked long. And Esau came and presented himself to his father and said, Father, or daddy, you got the soup. And his father said, man, hold on now. I already give the next one my blessing. What can it be? And so said, Esau was so ragged and so hot and so hostile. He said, Jacob had to flee and leave from his presence of his brother. He left the home that he knew and he was familiar with. And it says that Jacob and Esau were enemies from that time. Now imagine this Jacob who was a crook. This wild man who stole his brother birthright. And here Genesis tells us that age Jacob saw and was lying down and says he saw angels ascending and descending. And Jacob says, this is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. And it says that Jacob worshipped him. First lesson for the day, the feast of Michael and all angels. The second lesson, my dear friends, comes from the book of the Revelation. Now remember the book of the Revelation is a book in which they are dedicated to the visions of John. Because John talked about Jesus and it says that everyone who talked about Jesus at this time would have been exiled. Would have been ostracized and would have been placed. Oh, okay, and let me help me and also good to see you. A star of the church. He would have been placed on the outside and said he went to an isle called Patmos. And it says that on this isle, John saw many visions. And he saw in his vision that comes from the lesson for the day, he said he saw that the Michael, the king of all angels, was fighting against the deceiver, the ones who come to kill and destroy. He come to steal, kill, and destroy. Remember this song? Who knows this song? He come to kill, steal, kill, and destroy. And it says that Michael and all angels band together. And it says that they fought against Satan. And his angels, and they were thrown down from heaven. And Michael, my dear friends, Michael the archangel, who we hear about today, whom feast we celebrate on the 29th of September, is victorious in battle. The third lesson, my dear friends, comes from the Gospel of John. John's Gospel, in which he says that, that he saw, and he says, Nathaniel, I saw you under the fig tree. And Nathaniel says, where did you see me? And Jesus says, you will see greater things than these. And it says that you will see angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Because indeed God's Son came to cure man from all sin, sickness, and death. All encapsulating, my dear friends, the concept of Michael and all angels. Now, I don't know about you, but I believe in angels. They might have said at one time, I said, I believe in miracles. But I also believe in angels. Because angels are something we hear about. We heard about children in Sunday school. And they are present with us to this time. 
In the book of Job, my dear friends, when Job tries to gather his course against God, it says that Job put question to God. He can't put question to God because he is our creator. He is our sustainer, and he's a God who gives us life. And then the book of Job says, God says, in questioning, God asks him, were you there when the foundations of the earth were placed in the being? Were you there when the morning stars sang out for joy? And all the heavenly beings shouted for joy. But since my dear friends Job wasn't there, it tells us that the heavenly choirs, angels sang out for joy. Michael shows up not only in, 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 in Revelation, Michael shows up in the book of Daniel. I know the church islanders and the belongers are people who love the Bible. And they will say, boy, Father, Daniel always, um, Michael shows up also in the book of Daniel. A messenger came to Daniel while Daniel was in captivity in Babylon. The messenger reported that he was delayed in coming to comfort Daniel because he was being held by the king of Persia. But Michael, one of the chief of princes, came to his help. The messenger tells Daniel that things are going to get worse before they get better. But all that time, Michael was a great prince who was in charge of the people. And there was a time of trouble such as never been before. And since the nations all cried out, everyone looked at Daniel and the ancient of ancient. It says that great archangel Michael came to the rescue. In other words, they didn't get discouraged because they know that the forces were at work and that the world would come into being. And Michael is an angel and a prince of all angels and the chief of all angels, the great prince which is in charge of the people. It looks gospel, my dear friends. We hear what God in it, my dear friends. And we hear how, indeed, some angels were sent to Mary. Oh, hallelujah. And Zachariah and Elizabeth. Mary, my dear friends, was a woman who would have been caught, and he would have been caught pregnant. And it says that she was so scared, she had to leave and go to her cousin Elizabeth so that she could not be killed. It says that Gabriel who appears, Gabriel is one of the angels, my dear friends. Gabriel is heard about and is talked about and is said plainly in the Gospels. It says Gabriel went to Elizabeth and to Zachariah. And it says he went to Elizabeth and says, man, I, I oh, like my back, my back, I, I already changed life. How can it be? And it says that when Gabriel told Elizabeth that she would get pregnant. She didn't know what to do with herself. When he went, my dear friends, Zachariah says, he went to Zachariah said, the angel, the angel met Zachariah in the temple. And Zachariah did not believe. Zachariah said, man, I, 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 I don't even know, I don't know what the 21 gun salute is. I don't know where Yager is. They ain't make Yalas yet. They ain't got no secret with me. And it says, cha-ching, 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 jackpot, hallelujah. And says, Elizabeth got pregnant. Now, I don't know about you all, but when people get pregnant in Nassau, and they don't know who the daddy is, everybody, <laughs> you know what it is, you know what it is, Zachariah. <laughs> Everybody's talking about Zachariah. But you know what? The angel, my dear friends, we lose Zachariah's tongue. When he was born, they said, what should you name him? And it says that the Zachariah wrote on the topic, his name is John. His tongue was released. It says that Gabriel, one of the angels, came to Mary. And Mary should be like every single Anglican Christian or every single Christian that is in Turks and Caicos believe and trust in God. Mary said, when the angel had finished speaking to her, let it be unto me according to your word. The angel, my dear friends, brought her good news. Today, my dear friends, I came to tell you that some of you here in our midst may be angels. They had a big, massive youth gathering and youth lock in. Those advisors, like my boy in the sound room, Ancha, and all those people who work with young people, you are angels of those young people. Some of those young people have a name on the relationship they should have to their mother. And some people have known, not known, and only daddy. Might be the daddy they come to church and see and saw on the altar, leading worship, taking part, and letting them know that men, real men, love God. Real men serve God. 
and real men worship God. Just to give you three fine gentlemen up here. And so when we talk about angels, my dear friends, remember that you are an angel in someone's life. You came to share with them the good news. Canon Nami would have been an angel to many persons whom you would have read and stared in the right direction. Reminding them that when you go to church, you go to school, you involve yourself, see them serving all the boys again, girls again, CYM. You never see them on the TV saying, they can't call it in. Why? Because they're under it. The government in the Bahamas now say it's up to They stop putting people pictures on TV. Put the pictures up. Put the pictures up and call it in. Because it meant that the parents did not do what they needed to do. Church don't charge nobody. Yeah? Those two young men in the back, they don't charge you to come to church. But when you go to church, my dear friends, remember that you are an angel. Remember the scripture says, train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they are old, they will not depart from it. You plant the seed, my dear friends, while it's young. So that the angels who guard and protect us each day and each night, my dear friends, will plant a seed in those young men and those young men who will be traumatized later in their lives. You don't have to worry about the women, you know, and the girls. Because the girls are on a straight path. But these young men need all the nurturing, all the direction, all the positive energy that they can get. Because, you know, the men are seen as a seed that is vulnerable. That can be cajoled and could be tempted and could be tried at any opportunity. But remember, men, that you are angels in your own life. One person said, to one person, to the world, you may be one person. Let me read. To the world, you may be just one person. But to one person, you might be their world. Let me repeat it. To the world, ladies in purple, you might just be one person. But to one person, you may be their world. They look up to you. They want to hear from you. They want to see you on Sunday, bringing them a bulletin and, say, and saying, I just called to say I love you. I just called to say how much I care. I just call to say I love you and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. An angel, my dear friends, is those persons who inspire us. God doesn't send no angels now. The people who inspire us say, boy, get up! Off, do nothing, see. Pull up your socks. Get yourself ready for action. Study and oh, hallelujah, when you get to high school, you can do well. You can go to get a scholarship. You can go away, and you know what? You don't forget about your island. You Canada have many people. The United States have many people. But come back here and do something for your Turks and Caicos, for your Provo, your North Caicos, your Middle Caicos, your Grand Turk. Be an investment because the government of the Turks and Caicos invested in you. Today, my dear friends, the angels remind us, my dear friends, that they are all around. Angels are with us. They protect us while we are asleep. They protect us while we are awake. And they protect us on every side. My dear friends, the spiritual warfare in the gospel says that then when the angels fought against the devil, friends, it was not a good fight. It was a warrior fight. And you know what? We wonder why bad things happen in this world. Things happen so that we can remind ourselves, be sober, just as people Peter said. Be sober, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, is crawling around you on every side. One of the great hopes, my dear friends, we have is that great angel, Michael, will give us all his armor power when we're tempted by the devil. The feast of Michael and angel and all angels reminds us that there's another realm of God's creation. In addition to this material realm that we see, there's a realm that's so foreign to our physical senses that the only way we can see it is if we exist with God and heaven. So in the Nicene Creed, which we'll say in a few minutes, it says we confess according to the word of God, we confess that God the Father Almighty, make of heaven and earth, of all that is visible or invis invisible or seen and unseen. What we are saying is we believe that, my dear friends, that the two realms of God's creation are visible and invisible, seen and unseen. 
Sometimes they, my dear friends, can be mystified. Or when we believe, my dear friends, in this physical realm that we cannot see. We know that God is there. We know that we don't, we don't can't see, no, we cannot see him. But you know, he's there with us. I want you to know, my dear friends, stretch your minds to believe in these angels who are there with us. The two realms, the visible and invisible, the unseen and unseen. And to remind ourselves, we might be blind and deaf to see them, but you know what? They are there with us. God, my dear friends, is in charge of these two realms. And God says to us, all that he's made is wonderful. There, my dear friends, we can feel it. We can feel the angels around us. And one day, my dear friends, Jesus is coming in, surrounded by his angels. And the archangels call, and the trust of God will sound, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Can you imagine beginning to comprehend how awesome a sight that will be? In Revelation, my dear friends, John sees that many angels numbering married and married of thousands will be there. But you know what? We want to be there. We want to be considered in the number, doing what God told us to do, and being faithful in the death. So my dear friends, God lifts that curtain and separates the seen from unseen, the visible from an invisible. But you know what? Angels are all around us. Angels are you sitting in the pool, giving comfort, giving encouragement to those who may be considered lost, and giving direction, my dear friends, to those who need help. A proper understanding of this doctrine of angels is really important in the life of our faith. Firstly, it helps to maintain a proper perspective of ourselves. It teaches us that we are not only one in this little small earth, but we are one in the choir of angels. The angels in choirs, and the angels who sit beside us, and the angels who sit in the front or in the back of us. The curtain, my dear friends, can be lifted. And you know what? When we see that those curtains lifted, my dear friends, we'll be hearing, just as we sing in the Sunday, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We understand that we are not only the ones fighting the good fate of faith or fight, but there are also legions, my dear friends, of angels fighting for us here on heaven. So the doctrine of angels should help you to give yourself a dose of humility. Think about how God loves us so much that he sent a guardian angel to protect us on every side. Which, my dear friends of us, can say that we are a guardian angel? Which of us want to be in a near-death accident? May it come to a point where we would have even maybe lost our lives. But when we reflect on it, it ain't luck, my dear friends. It's one of God's holy guardian angels protecting us. Just be sure, my dear friends, you put your life in a particular order that it comes. Give God thanks for those miracle angels we do not see. And yet are here. It is angels who dance and celebrate on Jesus and with Jesus every time the lost sheep has come home. The hymn writer says, I was glad our oh, there's joy, joy in heaven when one wayward member returns to church. One, one wayward boy knows the way that he should go. Angels, my dear friends, does not give us that body and blood. It is Jesus Christ who gives us the body and blood. Angels and our angels, my dear friends, join with us and all those heavenly hosts giving all thanks and praise, my dear friends, when we've made it to a new day. Made it to a new month. Friends, someone said in the stocracy when we were getting dressed, it is October. We've made it to the 10th month. Ain't luck. Luck is what a fool calls God's blessings. Hurricanes would have happened and been threat to us and to our shoreline and to the very homes that we so venerate and so call so blessed. But you know what? It is God's angels, my dear friends, who steer those storms away from us. Oh, hallelujah. He's ready to be praised. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the storms and hurricanes. And it's God, my dear friends, who angels speak to us and say, don't go that way. Go this way. How many of us, my dear friends, heard about the World Trade Center bombing? And some angel would have said, don't go to work this morning. 
Go get some coffee. Don't go here, go there. And your life would have been spared. Hallelujah. You'd be like, hit the jackpot. Cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. Because God, any guardian angel that he sent to protect you, can't you say. Today, my dear friends, those people on the outside may say, boy, <laughs> angels, I never have a dummy, Joe. Angels are real. They come to us. You are an angel when you go to some sick person, to some person who's lost their way, to some person who feels that all is lost, but you came to inspire them and to give them another chance. How many of you, my dear friends, even first of all, it looks like angels, but you know what? It reminds us that when you think you're an angel, humble yourself and tell God, use me, that I can be a blessing to others. So today, my dear friends, on this 20, or this first Sunday of October, through many trials and dangers that we already come, God has kept us safe. We have not had a hurricane threaten upon us. Sickness might have come near our door, death, even death come near our door. But you know what? It did not come in our home. God has protected us. And there's only angels, God, and protect us and keep us on every side. And to the day, my dear friends, as we give God thanks to those angels like Michael and all angels, our guardian angel who stands at our bedsides with our swords, with their swords drawn, who stand at our windows to keep the robbers and those enemies and perpetrators from breaking into our homes. It is God's angels, my dear friends, who protect us when we can't protect ourselves. Today, our dear, my dear friends, as we think about how angels protect us on every side, Think about how angels are in abuse. In front of you, behind you, beside you, or even adjacent from you. Do not limit yourselves. Because the minute you limit yourselves, you limit God. And there's a God who says, like Nike, just do it. Or there's a Gatorade who says, it is inside of you. Believe in yourself. If you have a dream, and as we celebrate this youth month, that you would be a dream, a possibility. Remember the little children, I don't know, you're singing here. I am a promise. I am a possibility. I am a great big bunch of potentiality. And so when we believe it, if we sing it, my dear friends, we start believing it. And we will start believing it, my dear friends. The whole providentious area will know they're Christian. And so today, our dear friends, we celebrate this most auspicious occasion with the government officials here beaming and all those government dignitaries in our midst. Remind yourself that those persons who work with you, those persons who work in the courts, those persons who try to defend people when they are innocent, they're angels looking over us, guiding us and protecting us. So our watchword is, if you are an angel, believe in your dreams. Believe in yourself. Because you know what? Our grandmother would have been maybe an angel in our life. She would have said, come up. Go to Sunday school. Come up, let's go to church. And you are here because of the angel that they were in your life. And so when you believe in an angel, my dear friends, raise up for yourself an angel and say, it is in me. And just so, uh, it is his own Michael, my own my, my, my Kelly now, but like, oh, he says that there's an angel inside of all of us. And you know, he says one of his famous songs I really love. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. Think about it every night and day. Spread my wings and fly away. We believe that we are angels. And we believe that we can fly. We can touch the sky by touching someone else's. And so all those sounds come into being. I love sounds. I want to argue, he says, reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place if you can. In his name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As we turn to page four. We will now say our confession of faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Together we say, 
We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all sea and seen. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, one in made, one in being the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In fulfillment of the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. And have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in our holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge our baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead, the light of the world. Amen. In the sessions, prayers. Let us pray for the church and for all people according to their needs. Lord, in your love, bless and inspire all members of the clergy, especially Howard or Lish, Drexel, Gilbert, or Bishops, Desiree, Carrie, Lamuel, and Mark, or Priests. That they lie in the name of their teaching, and that they might be in the great religion and the state of Pray for our own needs and those of others. Together, accept our prayers and intercessions, Father, according to your wisdom, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. The act of penitence, the top of the following page. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not enough. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us kneel in a moment of silence before God, telling him we are sorry for the things we have done that were not pleasing in his sight. 
Please kneel. Together we solemnly pray, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and one another in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are sorry to repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in the newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon me for your sins. Confirm and strengthen in all goodness and keep in life eternal through Jesus Christ. Our Lord, Amen. please stand with the greeting of the priest. We are the body of Christ. By the one spirit, we are baptized in one body. And of all made a drink of the one spirit. Let us then pursue the things that make for peace and build up common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, my dear friends. Good morning, church. We are so glad to have all of you here this morning. Whether you are visiting or home, you are all indeed welcome. We extend a special welcome to Father Chester Burton, our celebrant and preacher today. Welcome, Father. We hope that your visit to us has been a wonderful experience. We also acknowledge the presence of the Honorable Otis Morris and the Honorable Jamel Robinson, the Director for Gender Affairs, Ms. Carolyn Dickinson, the PS for Culture, Mr. Wesley Clairvaux. Welcome to you and your teams who are here worshiping with us this morning. The Department of Culture and Heritage are worshiping with us to begin our month of national heritage under the theme unveiling our hidden treasure exploring the gems of TCI heritage and the Department of Gender Affairs is worshiping with us in observance of domestic violence awareness month the theme for this international observance is everyone knows someone welcome 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 The CYM of our parish is very appreciative to everyone who came out to help our make our youth lock-in a success. We would especially like to thank all of our speakers that came out of their houses at 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. to impart knowledge to our kids, as well as to our kitchen team. We have a few younger ladies that come out every year to help us in the kitchen and they stay up all night cooking and preparing. Kitchen team, please stand so that we can acknowledge you. We have two of them here this morning. They are the youngest people on our team. So we say thank you, ladies. Also, our youth group was acknowledged by the Department of Youth in Youth Month for for our relationship building and our community service. We were awarded in the first annual Youth Awards. So that's our award, a congratulations team. We also acknowledge 
representation from the Seroptimus. Seroptimus, ladies, welcome. Please save the date. October 29th will be our family service over in North Caicos. More details will be upcoming. Please remember in your prayers the bereaved, the families of the late Helena Durham, Louise Hall, Devin Seymour, and Michael Taylor, and all those who mourn the loss of loved ones. Also remember our sick and our shut in. We also acknowledge the deputy director and the prosecution, the director of public prosecutions and their team. Please stand. I now invite the Honorable Otis Morris to come and bring brief remarks. Good morning, church. Um, it's surely a pleasure to be here this morning to worship with you guys at the St. Monica's Anglican Church. And it's also my pleasure this morning to bring greetings to you on behalf of the Ministry of Home Affairs and the Department of Gender Affairs, which I am the minister responsible for it. This morning, I am here to bring greetings on Domestic Violence Awareness Month. I am here today in a, bless, in a place blessed with so much to be thankful for, which is truly an honor, and I give all the thanks to the Almighty God. In our most challenging moments, our faith gives us strength and purpose to address whatever the nature of our difficulties may be. October is the month during which we observe domestic violence, we observe heritage and culture, we also, I think, also observe um, cancer this month. So October is a packful month. But my part today is on domestic violence. We thank God for having been allowed to worship with you, the office and members of the St. Monica's Anglican Church. It is a time when we stand together in solidarity to deal with the difficult difficulties brought about by the many manifestations of domestic violence. Prayer is the gift given to strengthen us in all actions. As we begin our activities this month, we thank you for joining us in church to the service today as our faith in God through prayer to bless the hands and hearts that stand united to the, to the end of the, to end the scrooge of domestic violence in our lands. I would like to say thank you on behalf of the Department of Gender Affairs within the Ministry of Home Affairs for your continued support and we welcome you to begin to the beginning of our observance, our observance of Domestic Violence Education Month. Thank you this morning and always a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord. I'm sorry if I missed anyone, but I think I see safeguarding unit over in the corner from the police. Welcome. And anyone else I've missed, I do apologize, but you are all indeed welcome. Can I ask the Departments of Gender Affairs and the Department of Culture to come forward for a special blessing? These ministries, my dear friends, just like the Anastasia and Thomas, hold a very important role in our society. We know that domestic violence has taken over our commonwealth, even our global world. And so they have a big task. And so, They'll only be as good as they are if we pray for them. They are angels of many persons who are being victims of domestic violence. So their role is so important in our society as we live in today. So I want everyone to stretch forth their hand as we lift them up in prayer to God, our Heavenly Father. We are sprinkling up in holy water so they remain faithful to the promise and the call that God has placed on their lives. Let us pray, my dear friends. 
Almighty and everlasting God, we lift you up this morning. We lift these persons up this morning. The minister, the various dignitaries, the various officials of God, permanent secretary, directors, and persons who work within and among the ministries. Pray, Lord, that during this month of celebration, that they would lift them up, O oh God, and that we pray, O oh Lord, for them. And we pray, O oh Lord, that they will acknowledge that they are sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. They are not strong, O oh God, but you will make them strong with the purpose of God that you have in their lives. Sanctify their body, sanctify their mind, sanctify their entire being. Loose every chain of God. Have them bound not being a government official that stands in the highest order of due diligence and yeomanship to the society of the Turks and Caicos. Now, God, as we sprinkle them with holy water, God, they are holy and they are angels of God who would bring angel blessings to many persons whom they administer to. In these few months and the year to come, we ask for prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Gentlemen, let's call Anybody, anyone celebrating birthdays or anniversaries, anything special this week? Or for tree him.
joyful thing. Always and everywhere they give you thanks for the mighty everlasting God. For in the mystery of your Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we reveal your glory in three persons, equal in majesty, and in the body and splendor, yet one God, one Lord, ever we worship and glorify. Therefore we praise you, joining our voice with the angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who ever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. At the appropriate time and place. Holy and gracious Father, all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness come from you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, whom you sent to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile to you the God and Father of all. We therefore bring these gifts and we ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who offered himself with obedience to your will, the perfect sacrifice for all mankind. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. And after supper, he took a cup of wine. And when he gave him thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shared for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for remembrance of me. Son and Lord for our salvation, his glory is resurrection and ascension, his continuing intercession for us in heaven, and looking for his coming in glory, we offer in thanksgiving and holy and life giving sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering and grant it be you all and eat these holy gifts. May be filled with your Holy Spirit and be one body in Christ and serve in unity, constancy, and peace. May he make us a perpetual offering to you. And enable us in communion to blessed Mary, blessed Joseph, our spouse, blessed John the Baptist, Peter and Paul, and Monica, your patron saint, and the whole company of heaven, the share and in inheritance of your saints. With him and in him and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before in earth and heaven, in sounds of everlasting praise.
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because you are shared. The gifts of God for the people of God. I be upon you. Blessing Christ shall I be upon you. For the Christ my dear sister. For the Christ my dear sister.
First communion prayer upon, uh, sorry, first communion hymn upon the bulletin. Let's sing it out, lots of people, lots. All together we sing, lots of leave. 612 in the bulletin. In joyful thanksgiving, the post communion prayer found in the bulletin. Together we pray, Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood. We are Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in the holy ministry that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, Send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ. For to him, to you, and to God, we honor and glory now and forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Spirit of truth lead you to all truth. Give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the works and words of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest from me with you this day and forevermore. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bobby Dog.
you remember the God, whatever you bring him to it, you'll bring him through it. Now, God has believed in your house, not for your presence. Send your holy angels to God and protect us this day and forevermore. And let the church say, Amen. And let the church say, Amen.